Oh, yes. Happy Monday morning, Miami sports music fans. It is Dono and Daniels episode number two. This is going to be an exciting one, guys. The table is actually set for the Super Bowl, which is less than two weeks away. A couple really good games. Good morning, Stephen D. I'm Alex. Good Dono, morning, Stephen D. And I know I know we've got a lot to say before we fully break down what happened at yesterday's games and what is going to happen here down the home stretch of the Miami Dolphins head coaching search. But let me start off by saying, Steve, I didn't know how conference championship weekend would be after an epic divisional weekend the week prior. And we ended up getting two incredible games yesterday. So the NFL playoffs, the wild card weekend was kind of weak. But since then, the NFL playoffs have delivered. The last two weekends have been absolutely amazing. The divisional games, all three games were within a field goal. And uh, the fourth game being four points. And then yesterday, yesterday's two games were absolutely amazing, too, both coming down to the, to the end. And, uh, I mean, look, you you know, I, I remember turning to my wife yesterday, and we'll talk about this more later on in the show, just saying, hey, look, the teams looked absolutely amazing. But, you know, I am excited to talk about that and a lot more on uh, episode number two of Dono and Daniels, man. Yeah. I don't yeah. like your Batman hat, though. Oh, are, are you because you're anti DC? Is that right? No, I'm Superman. Oh, you're dude. Superman guy. Superman. Listen, you know, I mean, Batman. Batman kicked Superman's butt. In no, Batman he did not, Super bro. He, he no, was literally he, he was about to kill Superman, and then they bonded over the fact that their moms have the same name, and then they became friends and lived happily ever after. But Batman was like this close to killing Superman. Just take the L, bro. Bro, really. We're going to have to have a whole episode Batman versus Superman, bro. Because, like, you wearing that Batman hat right now is doing things to me inside of me. It's triggering me. I'm feeling triggered, man. I'm feeling so triggered. Hey, real quick, before we get started, can we do a rundown? Uh, I, I want to remind everybody, look, hey, this is the most awesome morning show in the world right here. Every Easily. Monday, right? Easily, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every Monday, live, 930, Tuesday through uh, uh, Friday. Hold on. Tuesday through Friday, starting at 9 a.m., you got Clock Blockers. I mean, they're the number one Miami fan morning show. You got the Power Hour starting on Tuesdays at 8. Uh, you got Health Fins, and there's a whole bunch of more shows that are in the lineup, and I'm just super excited about everything that we have going on. So I am uh, wanting to say, hey, look, we got that going on. But some one of the things that I love about this job, Alex, is Twitter. Do you love Twitter? <laughs> Oh, my. I, I think anybody who's been following me the last couple of days knows I love Twitter a little bit too much because I, I've had maybe I've had some fun at the expense of a certain Hawaiian quarterback. <coughs> OK, OK. All right. Um, all right. Look, so I want to I want to I want to talk to the fans for a second. Whew, how do I kind of put this into it? So I. I, one of the reasons I started this platform, Dono, is because I love the Miami Dolphins. And I love everybody. I'm Mr. Spread Kindness, Positivity, and Love. You can see right below me. Stephen DSKPL, Spread Kindness, Positivity, and Love. And, um, you know, one of the things that I love about this platform that I've had is I've had a lot of different things, a lot of different entities come onto this platform. Uh, YouTubers. Uh, news websites, media outlets, you name it. And I try to say that I am the Switzerland, that everybody can come on my show. It's safe here. It's fun to talk about. Uh, and I get like what Twitter is sometimes, and, and it's my favorite to do. But I also get how people can be sometimes. So Fridays, mm -hmm. I, I usually wear this shirt. It's called Spread Kindness. I love it's it. It's contagious. Because I don't think there's enough kindness in this world. And let me tell you, and the, some of the things that I saw this weekend on Twitter were like absolutely, like not even just Twitter, just YouTube, Twitter, there's way too much hate going on. Way too much hate going on. And so I need to talk to you all about that real quick and just be like, there are plenty of people, like I do the show every day, Right. I do it every single day. You do a show every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to do it when it's on your own platform or you're on a new platform. I mean, you've been on a couple of new platforms over the last year and a half, Alex. Yeah, I have, and, yeah. And, and so we know how hard it is. And then me dropping 
um, you know, you know, this podcast network six months ago, it's been really difficult for me. And I don't want to speak for you or anybody else, but I know how difficult it is. So when I see some of the hate that I saw this weekend on Twitter and on YouTube, I don't think that it's worth, uh, like, I don't I, like, I try not to do clickbait. I don't think I have. And I also try not to do, um, you know, like trying to defame or defame to, to slander somebody else in order to raise my level right. of whatever. I know that I've made mistakes on my platform in the past. I'm not like saying I haven't, but I also know that I try to lead with kindness and positivity and love. <laughs> it's tough to be positive being a Dolphins fan. There's no doubt about that. Very tough, especially and, for long-suffering Dolphin fans like you and I and a lot of the people in the chat. A hundred percent. I just need to be understanding that other people are upset and pissed off, and 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 that's what it's going to be, right? Yeah. But I also know that you don't have to slander somebody else in order to get your point across. If you don't like, here's the best part about having a hundred different. Like, let me let me put it this way. I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this, Alex. I love stand-up comedy. Me too. And sta- stand-up comedy isn't for everybody. I don't get political on my show, but but mm-hmm. I'm going to make a point here. I love Dave Chappelle. I absolutely love Dave Chappelle. And I know Dave Chappelle can be very controversial to some people, right? And I've always said that stand-up comedy, you find a person that you enjoy, and that's who that's the type of comedy that you enjoy. But that doesn't mean that's the type of comedy that everybody else enjoys. Same idea with Dolphins YouTube platforms. Same ideas with, with, with media outlets. There are going to be some that you enjoy and others that you don't. You know what you do? You turn them off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or you just say, hey, look, that's the type of person that that is. I don't have to, you know, say X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You got to remember, like, I do this, like, if somebody's going to slant, like, put me down, nobody did, by the way. Let's just put that out there. I'm just observe. I'm just stating on what I've observed over the last 48 to 72 hours, and I don't like it. And I don't like it. I hate it. And there are some people that are on, that watch my show, who I love, my listeners, who I'm calling out on some of this, too. Mm-hmm. Because I there needs to be more positivity in this world. I agree. There needs to be. And I'm just, I'm so upset and kind of disgusted that this is the point that we've gone to, that we're going to start beating each other up metaphorically, you know, uh, verbally assassinate other people because of maybe what we like. I'm not going to talk about anybody particular situation. Just know that everybody out here is trying to do something that they love to do and or make a living, and or provide good content for people. Yeah. Stop. Uh, listen to me, y'all. Stop slandering, degrading, being mean. None of that is necessary. If you don't like me, feel free to turn me off. If you don't like Alex, keep watching Alex. Alex <laughs> Alex, Alex is all for it. I appreciate it. I, I am kind of all for it. I appreciate okay. it. <laughs> but, but, can, but can, can I add something in? Because I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I might know one of the specific things you're referencing, and I'm not going to mention it specifically because I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to bring any more heat on this person. But mm-hmm. well, let me tell you something, man, uh, out there. Because and and I'm you know I'm I'm not a full time reporter. I'm not really mm-hmm. a reporter. Period. Okay, but. You know, when you somebody like me and somebody like you, Stephen, because I'm sure you've been in these positions before that Mm -hmm. even though our job description might not be a reporter, sometimes you do get told things. Sometimes you do kind of stumble into sources and you have information that comes from somebody you trust and somebody who's given you proper info before. Uh, And even if you are getting information, it's happened to me before. It it happened to somebody who I think is a mutual friend of ours over this past week. It's probably happened to you before where you get given information that may be true or at least partially true. And you actually put it out there into the universe. You report it and it ends up either being wrong because maybe your source had it wrong for once or maybe the information your source gave you was true but it's still what they were reporting didn't actually come to pass and then people start slandering you and hating on you like it happens man 
Adam Schefter has been wrong. Ian Rappaport has been wrong before. A lot of the best in the business have been given either false information or information that wasn't false, but things change, right? When you're talking about things like coaching searches in the NFL, sometimes minds get changed, right? Sometimes things change and are fluid situations and get switched up at the last minute. And so, yeah, you don't need to be launching personal attacks on people for that. And yeah, I, I think what ends up happening a lot, Steve, is just the, the way that human beings interact, right? I mean, 21st century it's completely evolving, right? 15, 20 years ago, there was no social media. You couldn't hide behind avatars, right? People spoke face to face, right? There are certain things you wouldn't say to a human being you're looking in the eyes, right? But if you're hiding behind an avatar and a nickname and you're tweeting from your grandma's basement, it's a lot easier to be the keyboard tough guy. And so you have a lot of keyboard, keyboard warriors, what I call them. Keyboard, keyboard warrior, warriors. right? And so I mean, my, my recommendation would be because uh, key, keyboard warriors have gone after me before. Sometimes mm -hmm. I deserve it, okay? Like, sometimes I'll say, you know what? I got to take the L on this one, all right? I don't when, have a problem with trash talk. That's not yeah. where I'm going with this. But when Alex. it gets personal, you mean? When you start getting into personal things, yeah. right? That's yeah, not, cool. not cool. When you start, that's not cool. And and I felt like, like it. so so I felt on, and by the way, there's three or four different situations I'm I'm talking about. Not just one. This isn't just one thing. This is three or four separate things that happened over the last 72 hours where every time I saw something new, I'm like, do I need to like make a statement? Not that my statement's going to change anything or do anything. I'm just, I'm over the negativity and, and, and I don't want that on my channel. Yeah. And so I'm going to start like when I have panels, I'm going to make some changes, man, because I can't have that no more. Like, I, I don't like it. It's not good karma. It's not good. Like, it, there's nothing positive that comes out of it. I have no problem with trash talk. I want mm -hmm. the trash talk to keep going. I love the high debates. Me too. But when you Answer. start getting personal in those debates, when you start getting personal on Twitter, when you start making videos about how somebody's horrible or that person is, is, is not good or, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, and look, every, there are some people here that know exactly who I'm talking about, a, a, a one of the four situations, and I love all those, let's get something else straight, the people that are doing it, I love, and I'm not banning them from my channel if, if they, if they choose to come back or what, I just want there to be a precedent that there are some things that I'm no longer going to put up with on my channel, and there are some things that people shouldn't go, like, deal with no more, in general. So I just like I love I I love everybody. I really mean that when I say that. I'm not lying yeah, to do. everybody. Yeah. I want there to be cohesiveness. And I understand the world, Stephen, not everybody's gonna like everybody. I get that. I get that. I understand that. There are some people that I know truly do not like me. I understand that. But that doesn't mean that I can't put my arms out for a hug and be like, come on, bro, let's I'm here. I'm here if you ever need me, and I'm always gonna be here. So, and, and that's, that's just kind of, that's just, kinda, I'm sorry, man. I had to get that off my chest no, man, because it's, I it's felt well some said. type of way about it. It's well said. And it's important for people to remember this stuff because they get so caught up in YouTube wars and social media <laughs> wars. And yeah. you just kind of remember, bro, like we're all, we're all human beings. Like sometimes you just need to take a chill pill, hug it out. So I respect it, man. And I also respect the fact and I can vouch for this because I've known Steve very well for a few years. We've been, you know, working closely together recently, just launched the show last week. Uh, this dude is probably the most positive person in this industry when it comes to spreading kindness, positivity, and love. There yeah. are very few out there, very few that I've encountered who are as nice as this dude. So I hope everyone takes Spread that kindness. to heart. It's yeah. contagious. And like, right. uh, and like, now, uh, I have to admit, I have been pretty negative about my team lately, but that's I mean, neither here that we'll get into that. At, we'll get into the it. end of the show. We'll get but, into um, it. Um, you know, so I appreciate you letting me say that. Cause I was like, do I say course, this on man. Dono and Daniels or do I wait to do this tomorrow on clock blockers? Because I didn't know, but I couldn't wait. Like I saw some stuff as early as this morning on Twitter and I was Sheesh. like, I'm like, no, but I'm not waiting. I got to say something <laughs> now, but, um, all right, real quick. First of all, how was your uh you had an anniversary? I did 10 years. The big 10 years, man. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Went out to a nice dinner on Friday. 
Uh, how many years you've been married now? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, twelve years, going on thirteen. Okay, so you got me beat, but you know, I mean, t- ten years. So you've been there. I didn't know if you'd been past the ten year barrier or not. It's a big milestone, man. Ten years is a big milestone. You know what they say about fifty percent of marriages end in divorce. We're happily mm-hmm. married. Um, you know, I, I don't know what percentage actually make it beyond the decade mark, but it's a nice milestone, man. The seven year itch is real. The seven year itch is real. Yeah. Think, right things change. Term? Things change around the seven year mark. Yeah. Where you kind of, you start to reach those crossroads <laughs> and the honeymoon phase is over. So yeah, the, the seven year mark is not for the faint of heart. You really so, have to, uh, to make an effort to keep it going after that. Uh, uh, do you, do you think that, um, or do you think, did you, uh, take your wife out? through the drive-thru and have her order from the right side of the menu instead of the left side. Because I'm saying, man, there's nothing ro- more romantic than the the biggie bag, the $5 biggie bag at Wendy's or the 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 buy one, get one at McDonald's. I'm just saying it's good and stuff. And I, I let her have the right Twix from the Twix bar because everyone See, knows the, the, right, the right Twix is the, is the superior. That's real the love left. right there, bro. <laughs> I love it. No, man, it was, it was really, really good. We celebrated the uh, the 10 year anniversary and I was able to I was able to squeeze in some Ozark. I'm not I'm not quite done yet with the first half of season four, Steve, but there's a couple things I wanted to hash yeah. out with you. Go ahead. And, Ozark's great. I love Ozark. Ozark is fantastic. Uh, you talk about dysfunctional families. Now, I'm I think I'm like three or four episodes into what is it? Seven episodes. The seven first episodes for four. part one. Yeah, I'm about three or four episodes in. Uh, I th- the fact that Jonah is doing what he's doing, working with the other side, I feel like that's going to be a big problem. Like, I oh, feel yeah. like if you're if you're talking about a recipe for disaster, <laughs> hitching your wagon to Darlene like that does not. I love like Darlene. Plan, Darlene's man. my favorite character. I'm sorry. She really is like like two things about this show that I truly love. And I'll get in. And, and there will be some spoilers here, just so you all know. Um, yeah, I, Chase once said I had to mute y'all because y'all talking spoilers. Um, look, I think I honestly think there's not too many other shows out there that are better written than this show. It's fantastic. Yeah, the, the script is amazing. Um, and then the acting in it is great, right? Like, like how many shows can say, "Hey, look, I de- not only had well-established actors, and, and um, what's my man's name? Why can't I think Bateman?" Jason Bateman, right? But then to take the kids, the daughter and the son, who have been developed over the last couple of seasons in their own right. Yeah. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. And 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 then, you know, having Darlene, who's just been, oh my God, she's so good. Like I I, I look, I said this to my wife the other night. I said, <clears throat> I said, I don't care how this ends. I said two things are going to happen. Number one, only one person's going to like one entity is going to make it out of this positively. Yeah. So will that be the family? I truly don't know. I but don't know. I know. But I know I want Darlene to make it out of it. I want Darlene really? to make it out of it. I do. <laughs> I think like, something like, bad's going to happen to her. She said, "Like my favorite." All right, so I'm about to cuss, which I which I don't. Oh, which, oh I'm, I'm about excited. to excited because my favorite line. All right, so if you have kids, put yourselves on mute. My favorite line of the entire show is Darlene's. I don't know shit about fuck. All right. Cause I, I, I constantly, line. it is the that best is line good. ever, bro. That is a great line. So yeah, I, I, I love it. I love it. I, yeah. I, I just, I just love how, uh, how, you know, <laughs> she, she was dead set, you know, she lost her, her supplier. Then she is dead set about letting, you know, the, uh, the hipsters, you know, market like the designer weed. And then, and then, uh, and then she sees the stack of money. She's like, "See, this is why I hired you." I know. And then they had Tommy from Power in there now too, which is like he his character's really. You know, good. I didn't watch Power. You didn't watch Power? No, I didn't watch Power. Out, Alex. That's out. what people tell me. I remember. I, I knew a couple people who were really into Power. Maybe I'll get into. I mean, it's it, did, did Power end well? Like, did did it did it finish? Uh, yeah, it did. But there's it, different. It, it, there's it different. Well, there's like spinoffs, yeah. right? There's spinoffs. There's yeah. spinoffs to it. And, and there's a lot going on there. There's like different books, like like they call it books, like the book of Boba Fett, which by the way I love. I haven't started that yet either. Oh my god, I'm slacking on my TV. You are so slacking, bro. So slacking. And then I just watched Netflix's uh, Sean Payton movie last night with. Um, Was that Ke- any good with Kevin James? Kevin James plays Sean Payton. 
I'm not going to give any spoilers there because that just came out within the last yeah. 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. Bro, worth all one and a half hours. Or really? Over, yeah, worth it. <laughs> worth it. Great movie. Now, now, I got to ask you, though, because like <laughs> um, at, at any point were you just like, you know what? Yeah, I can suspend disbelief enough to believe that Kevin James is Sean Payton. Like, did, could he pull I, it it's off? It's not like that. It's not no? like that. It's it, it's it's like. You don't you like his character is Sean Payton. Don't get me wrong, but like it's good. Like you have to watch it. It's tar- hard. I can't put it into words. But like I didn't have any issues stating, "Oh wow, he's Sean Payton." I can't believe he's Sean Payton because right. the movie is not like that. It's it's okay. a it's a comedy, um, and it's 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 really good. It's really really good. So l- l- let me ask you a question. Going back to Ozark, because you you brought this up and it got me thinking. Do you think that once the show is over and there's going to be a second half of season four, it's probably going to come out, I don't know, in a year or so. They better drop that thing less. Like, I, I want that so. thing. to. We're dropping season four today. Like, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Part two. Part two. Yeah. No, but <laughs> do, do you think that the writers are going to let Marty Bird get away with it? Because something, something that I've noticed, okay, on TV shows like this, right? And obviously no no two shows are exactly the same, but Breaking Bad, I would consider it to be kind of a similar show uh, to Ozark. And I think that the people who write these shows, they feel that there is this moral obligation to give consequences to people who do terrible things. So I, at the end of the day, I wonder if the writers of this show are going to say, you know what, Marty's going to get away with it, right? Because in the case of Walter White in Breaking Bad, like, uh, I know that this is something that went through Vince Gilligan's head, who was the showrunner and the primary writer of that show, was mm-hmm. I can't let this guy just ride off into the sunset, super rich, cancer-free, because remember yes, Walter can. White had the upcut. But they didn't, though, at the end of the day. Like, I he know. ended up he ended up getting killed, right? And I think that that... It, it, t- Tony, Spoiler alert, Alex! Dag, bro! I mean, for, for a show that ended eight years ago. My apologies. My apologies. Nine years ago. I think it was 2013 when that show ended. Now, people kind of wonder what really happened at the end of The Sopranos, right? But there were a lot of hints. It seemed like Tony Soprano did get killed, but they yeah. didn't actually show it on you screen. You never know. You never know. Never know. That's one of those things where it's like, did he really just get away with everything, or did he get whacked right after the the Bro, screen faded whacked. to black? We right? all know he got whacked. I think he got whacked. Uh, it's been, it's been my theory since that show ended like fifteen years ago. So in in the case of Ozark, do you think they can let Marty get away with it, win everything, get off with a happy family and and bundles full of money, or? Is something either going to happen terribly to him, something going to happen terribly, I hope not, to one of the kids? Uh, I, I could see Wendy maybe getting away with it. I don't know, even though she, she she's a badass. Like, well, Wendy is uh, – she, she is funny, a like, cannon. I mean, think about where her character came from the beginning to, like, the end. But what I'll yeah. say is my working theory is that only one entity right. is going to survive everything. So it won't be Darlene and – Right. Uh, what's Jason's character's name? Marty. Marty. It won't be. It won't be. It won't be Darlene and Marty both being. It'll only be one. One of the two are going to be able to get out of there with it, right? So, my that's my working theory. Do I think? But the whole show is based on people doing bad things. All the characters are messed up. Yeah. So yes, and 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 I asked my wife. I was like, "Do you think everybody's going to get killed at the end?" And she's like, "No, somebody's going to make it out of this. Yeah. So, somebody's going to make it out of there." Yeah. But but there but we're both of the mindset that and the second half of this pa- of the last season here that there's going to be a two or three big characters getting killed. Oh, for sure, for sure. There has to be. <clears throat> there has to be. So uh, look, I I we all saw, and I won't say, but we all saw one of the big characters die at the end of part one. So you mm-hmm. know that was a big, which okay. I was happy about because I didn't like her. But that's neither here. <laughs> That's neither here. And see, I said her, so now I even spoiled it more. But <laughs> thanks a lot, Steve. I know. <laughs> um, all right. What else, what what's now, what what are we talking about next, Alex? Well, do do you want to get into the incredible display by Joe Burrow yesterday? Do you, do you want to get into the football stuff, or do you want to get through a couple TV things first? Well, I I, I just I, what I really wanted to do real quick is talk about how good like 
uh, South Florida teams have been the Heat and the Panthers. Just oh my real god! Quick. Yes, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, yeah, because those uh, are what real good teams look like. Like we're gonna get into the playoff talk and the coaching search, no doubt. But like, yeah. I just, it's so weird to see a team from South Florida be actually good. You know, yeah, like it, consistently. It, well, and and with uh, and and with the Heat, obviously, I mean, they, I think they have a truly special team this year, even compared to years past. But in in the Miami Heat's case, this has been a consistently well run organization going back to the mid nineties. They've had some ups, they've had some downs. Even Pat Riley, who's basically a god, has made some mistakes before. I mean, the Hassan Whiteside, Deion Waiters, James Johnson, Tyler Johnson contracts. Like he's had, he's had a few missteps here and there. But you've got now a team, Steve, that is constructed so well uh, with people like Jimmy Butler and Bam at the top and Tyler Hero developing into an elite NBA scorer. But the depth on this team is crazy. I mean, you added a guy like P.J. Tucker with championship experience to add veteran leadership to this squad. Yeah, I know Kyle Lowry has been dealing with some personal stuff lately and has had some ups and downs. But once you get into a playoff series, you're going to see just how valuable Kyle Lowry is. Another guy, elite point card with championship level experience. But What's really insane about this Heat team is the depth is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, relying on people like Max Struess and Caleb Martin for extension for extensive stretches like the Heat have had to do this year, Gabe Vincent, how many guys undrafted, two-way contracts, former two-way contracts, former G League guys, in some cases current G League guys who come up on 10-day deals. And it's just been this weird thing where – They've made the most of some terrible things that have happened this year with the amount of injuries that they've had. And they've had so many guys coming in and out of the, the COVID protocol. And for most teams, when you have to go several nights without best players on your team, like Jimmy and Bam, Tyler Hero has missed a lot of time. It's like you just don't expect to win games like when you have oh, we've got two of our four best players out tonight. We're just we have to tread water. We're going to survive. We're not going to win tonight. And they've won most of these games when they've had to rely on, you know, the Gabe Vincents and the Max Struces and the Omer Yurtsevins of the world. And obviously, once you start getting down to March, April, when you're talking about playoffs and you're talking about the stretch run, we've got to cut it out with the injuries and, and the protocol stuff. Hopefully we get through that. And we hope, hopefully we don't have guys in and out of the protocol at that point. But in the meantime, when you've had days in November, December, and January, where you've had to go so deep down into the bench and people are contributing, it's developed so much depth for this team. So it's going to make this team better. Like Eric Spolster is going to have a much more reliable eight, nine, 10 guy rotation late. And if you do have, God forbid, any more injuries when you play the important stretch run games at the end of the year, you know that whoever you have to plug into that rotation is going to do well because they've already proven it to you. Now, in the case of the Florida Panthers, uh, this is a team where, yeah, you've had a core of guys, the uh, the Barkovs and the Huberdos, and my God, Huberdo is having such an incredible year, that have mm -hmm. been on this team for eight, nine years and have been kind of that core developing. But all the pieces that GM Bill Zito has added to this group in just the past two years, he has fortified this team so quickly. They've built this team with a clear identity. They are an offensive juggernaut. And, and you know, when the goaltending is good and Sergei Bobrovsky is having a renaissance year, and I hope he can carry that into the playoffs, you're talking about a team that could be historically good. Now, yeah. they have to back it up in the playoffs. But when it comes to their offensive output and just the pure joy of watching these guys play, like the other night I'm watching them, they're down like four to one, and they end up coming back and winning the game in overtime. And you can count on them doing that night after night after night, night after yeah. night. Uh, it's amazing how quickly Bill Zito, the GM, has revolutionized this team. And the thing, Steve, that's extra incredible about this is, you know, a few months back, three, four months ago, whenever it was, and you had that Chicago Blackhawks scandal that ultimately cost the Florida Panthers coach his job. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. he was innocent of it, because if, if he knew about those things and he was covering it up, he absolutely deserved to be fired, talking about Coach yeah. Q. Like, he deserved to lose his job. But the thing is, like, Coach Q is considered one of the best NHL head coaches. You had to let this guy go mid-season. You've had an interim coach and in Andrew Brunette, who's doing a very good job to his credit. But it's like, doesn't even seem to really matter who's coaching this team. Like, they are that talented. They are that well-led. The locker room or the dressing room, as you would call it in hockey, is so strong that they can overcome adversity like that and not skip a single beat.
You know, I, I, one of the things that I, that I want, I think you made all great points. I think one of the things that I wanted to touch on more was I have a lot of Dolphins friends, a lot of Dolphins, a lot of Finns family Mm -hmm. that are, that are fans of these two franchises, right? And they've been going to games and the atmosphere at both arenas are unbelievable. Yeah, the, the Panthers had uh, 18,000 the other night, and it was against, uh, against the San Jose Sharks. Like, usually, Steve, they usually only sell out when teams from Canada are here in the yep. winter because yep. the Snowbirds pack the arena, right? 100%. Or teams from New York because the Snowbirds pack the arena. The fact that, you know, a, a team from – nobody's traveling here from San Jose. The fact that they pack the building for that is really impressive. I know. I know. And 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 what – and and – I, I just think the atmosphere is starting to become crazy. And I'm as we move forward, like even if you're not a big NBA or NHL fan, y'all need to watch the Florida Panthers and the Miami Heat, especially when they're at home because the atmosphere has just been raucous. Yeah. And I think as we move forward, it's only going to get crazier and crazier. And I tell people the Dolphins can be like that because a lot of these same fans are Dolphins fans. But they just they haven't had anything to cheer about for the last 25 years. Yeah. So just imagine that's a small scale. Imagine what that's like at the Hard Rock Stadium. So I, I just think that we need number one, support the team. Support the hometown team. That's one. And number two, just enjoy it because like it's gonna be a great ride over the next two to three months watching the Heat and watching the Panthers. And I think they can mo- both make some really major runs down the stretch which is going to be a lot of fun well and the dolphins still own this city steven um do they though they they do they they do it's i've had this conversation with somebody and i don't think so i mean i want to get into playoff talk before we really get into dolphins but but i but no i don't because like like look here i've been i went to a lot of the home games this year and i would say at best most times it was 60 40 50 50 the fans okay that's interesting to hear that because i actually i have not i i haven't been to a home game since uh two seasons ago i actually have not been to a home game since i was covering the home games i've i've i've, I've sit i've sit a couple of years out so i haven't i haven't been amongst the people like you have the last couple of years mm-hmm. i mean look i i'll say that like that, that uh, the Ravens game that Thursday night. I mean, there was a lot of Ravens fans there. There yeah. were a lot of Ravens fans at that game, right? Um, and the same thing for uh, the last game I went to, which was the Jets home. Was the Jets home game? There were a lot of Jets fans. The Jets are horrible. They're worse than us. Yeah. And there was still a lot of Jets fans there. So, do I think that the Dolphins can be kings of South Florida? Yes. But I think Dolphins fans right now are just pissed off and it's tough to support a team with money, you know, financially when like who's like think about a cost of a family of four going to a Dolphins game. Oh, my God. I can't even. That's like three or four hundred bucks. Yeah, easily. Easy. 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 You know, and you can spend that in tickets and parking in in some situations. Yeah. You know, so look, I, I think that people have to realize the Dolphins are can be the kings of South Florida, but they got a lot to do. And part of what they need to do is copy what the Panthers and the Heat have done, and that's putting a product out on yeah. your home, you know, field, court, whatever, and, and making the fans real. Like, I feel like what the Panthers are doing right now is they're making South Florida realize, guys, this is your hockey team, yes. and we are the best in the league. And y'all need to come out and support us because it's wild crazy here. I mean, South Floridians, they always want to feel like they're getting their money's worth. It's its a discerning audience. And it causes, you know, people from other markets, they trash the South Florida sports fans. Oh, look at that. An empty stadium, empty arena. Mm-hmm. They're not showing up. It's like, okay, like, okay, you you, you can call us fair weather, uh, whatever you want to. I mean, obviously, there, there's a lot more to do down here, especially this time of year than most places around the country. Mm-hmm. And people will spend their money. They'll buy tickets. They'll buy parking. They'll bring their family if the team is good. If the team 100%. is garbage, if the team is garbage, they're not going to show up. And it, it, if you think that's some kind of a sign of weakness in the South Florida sports fan, I guess you're entitled to that opinion. The fans are there. And that's why I maintain it's still a Dolphins town. Just the Dolphins are a sleeping giant right now. 
Uh, obviously, the Heat for the last, you know, almost 30 years have given people more to be satisfied with and spend their money on than the Dolphins. The Florida Panthers have gotten there. Uh, you know, I, I I worked on the Panthers broadcast for many, many years, and I saw some arenas where there were probably a few hundred people there when the team wasn't very good. And now that they are good, people feel like, you know what, this is good entertainment value for my dollar, that I'm actually going to spend money. I'm going to go to FLA Live Arena and watch a game because I know they're going to put up a lot of goals and probably win tonight. Uh, the Dolphins are not at that point right now. You know, the Miami Hurricanes, who I also love, have not consistently been at that point for a yeah. really long time. And I, w I went to a game this year, and it was it was it was a, not a great atmosphere yeah. at the home run for, for the Hurricanes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not at all. Um, okay, let's get into the playoffs, baby. What did you like about this weekend? Well, I, I think the Joe Burrow story is incredible and what yeah. Cincinnati are doing. Now, I, I, I took a big-time L yesterday because uh, during the first quarter of that game in, in Kansas City, Kansas City looked like a juggernaut really into the second quarter for most of the first half. I mean, they had uh, that missed opportunity to add points before halftime when they ran out of time in the red zone. But, I mean, Steve, the Chiefs' offense, first three drives – three touchdowns they had a 21 to 3 lead in that game I and know. i tweeted out the bengals are going to get smoked today <sighs> you did and i saw your tweet i put that into the universe and you know I, I i know that the people who watch me on five reasons in the afternoon they all know this i'm not sure if all the miami sports music viewers know this i am a mush okay that i i have i have you're a, not a mush i Alex. am a mush i'm telling you i'm a mush I tweet out during the first quarter, the Bengals are going to get smoked. What ends up happening, Joe Burrow and that defense, they lead that comeback to end up winning the game. What was it, 27-24 It was a great in overtime. Comeback. It was it an was a unbelievable comeback. comeback, an unbelievable game. Um, and it was – okay, What how, did your opinion at all change of Pat Mahomes in that game? Because he did piss it a bit, Steve. And so, it's so, he, he, and so he many played times, bad. He, he played, played one of the bad. worst games. He yeah. played – he arguably played one of the worst halves, the second half of his entire terrible. NFL career. He was, and, he, and, listen, and, and the Bengals defensive front did a great job. He was running around like a headless chicken, but he still made some bad decisions, took some sacks he didn't have to take, turned some over he didn't have to turn over. It was a bad showing in the second half. Well, I think the other thing that you got to find amusing, I, I don't know if amusing is the right word, but Andy Reid consistently finds himself, like he's won a Super Bowl, right, in between yeah. here. So you can't say he's 100% mush. He's got a Super Bowl ring. but And so the same thing with, with, with Mahomes. But I was saying yesterday, I'm like, yeah, nobody's beating Kansas City. There's no way Cincinnati. Like, my man got sacked nine times earlier in the playoffs. There's no way Cincinnati's going to be able to compete with Kansas City. And boy, was I wrong. Like, I was straight wrong on every level. Yeah. Cincinnati came out to play. Their wide receivers look good. Oh, my God. Um, I mean, just everything that they executed was great. And the best thing of all, their defense played at a championship level because Mahomes just did not look comfortable at all in that second half. He, I mean, it was, it was, if you're a Kansas City fan or you were rooting for Kansas City, that was rough to watch. They only put up three points the entire second half in overtime. Mm -hmm. So you look, the reality is this, Alex, Cincinnati. They're going to be a tough team to put out, and they've yeah. proven that the entire Especially year. Especially at home. That building is a tough place to play, Arrowhead. It is, and that, that makes it all the more awesome for Cincinnati that, hey, not only have you not won a playoff game before this point uh, for 30-some-odd years, not only have you lost twice in the Super Bowl to the San Francisco 49ers, who I was rooting in the second game for just so that they could get their revenge on the 49ers in the Super Bowl, but – yeah. Although I do love Stafford. I do like Stafford a lot. Um, Me too. And I'm happy for him that he, he got oh, out of Detroit. Sorry. Detroit was purgatory. He got out of there. And look look at him now. He's in a Super Bowl already. Well, I mean, that also, like, as a Dolphins fan, you got to look at the L.A. situation. By the way, back-to-back -back years, 
Tampa and LA have hosted their home. The teams have hosted the it's Super crazy. Bowl in the Super Bowl, right? Crazy. That's and never I, happened sure, before and, last year in this year. No, it hadn't. And and I'm I'm not sure. I, I'm sure they're out. Their are odds out already. I haven't looked at them, but I, I would imagine LA are going to be the favorite at home. 100%. So yeah, I mean two two years two years in a row, you might have it never happened before, and now we have two years in a row, you might get home Super Bowl. And ah, how many Super Bowls have we hosted here in Miami? We don't I know. Have one of those. The, we've, ah. Us in New Orleans, I think are are the most or tied yeah. for the most. And yeah, we can't. That's neither here or there. But um, I think LA is a great situation as Dolphin fans to look at and say, look at what this franchise did. They had a decent quarterback in Jared Goff, somebody yeah. who, by the way, had gotten them to a Super Bowl. Now they didn't win it, but he got right. them there, right? Right. And they made the executive decision to give up the world, the world. For Matt Stafford. And look at, and I said the moment they made that trade, I said two things. I said, nothing is a success unless you get a Super Bowl victory out of this. Right. Like you traded way, I don't think you traded way too much. I'm just saying, for what you traded, the only, you have to get a Super Bowl. And, and, not, and, and that that's the way that the Rams do business, right? Because they, that, that is a team that has typically, mortgage the future for the present it, it, they they, re, they remind me a lot of way of the way pat riley runs the miami heat and i know two very different sports but it's like you know they, they look more at their draft picks as assets as they do you know i've got to use all these no i've, I've got to use these picks sometimes to get a veteran player a quarterback that we need uh and veteran defensive linemen as well mm -hmm. so they, they they tend to look at their draft picks as bargaining chips chips more than actual draft they picks. haven't had a first round draft pick in years i feel like number one i, I could be wrong about that but i'm don't think I am, but you know, I, I look at that and I say, well, look at where the dolphins are in, right? The dolphins have a quarterback, very controversial yeah. quarterback in Tua, right? And by the way, your tweet this weekend, do you, do you like, <laughs> can, bro, can you put, do, do you have it on the screen to share? <laughs> so it's like Joe dude. Burrow in late January versus Tua in late January. <laughs> See, I said like, like, this is fun. This is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I triggered this, so many people. You oh did. My God. It got 625 likes and 111 retweets. I was hoping for double that, if I'm being honest, but it is what it is. I thought it still popped. But it is funny. It is <laughs> It is super hilarious. But I look at that and I say, the Dolphins are kind of in the same situation, right? They yeah. have They have capital. They have capital. They have money. They have players. They can literally, like, if you think about it, the Dolphins, I say the Dolphins are going to, I've been very negative on the Dolphins lately because I just don't think they're going to make the right decision. With that being said, they have all the tools in the world to be successful. They have a great defense. They have a good core in place. You, you, you got, you got so much money. You got so much draft capital, so much money. Like if they bring in, like, let's talk about it, man. You know, the rumors out here now. Yeah. Harbaugh. Can, can, Harbaugh, I, man. Can, can I read you on that note? Because I'm I'm legitimately uh I, I I don't know what is happening here with Harbaugh. I know that they're I I've even been told by somebody who's given me good information and bad information in the past. So I take it with a grain of salt that uh that he was telling me over the last couple of days Harbaugh was the plan all along. You'll yep. see he's gonna end up in Miami. And I know a lot of people feel that way. Now I'm I'm reading a tweet, Steve, that came out after our show started from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN. Jeremy Fowler tweeted out 26 minutes ago, Jim Harbaugh conveyed legitimate interest in the Vikings head coaching job during his interview with the team per source. With Minnesota coming away feeling Harbaugh is ready for a return to the NFL. As of now, he's still considered in the mix for that job. So out of, and I, I'll have to find it, I can't remember who it was that tweeted out uh, yesterday that Harbaugh was There's going to inform. Yeah, yeah, that's the tweet I was just reading there. Okay, so uh, see if you could find this Mark Carmen tweet as well. From This is the one that gassed up Dolphin fans about 19 hours ago. He tweeted this. Now, I'm not that familiar with Mark Carmen's work. People have told me he's a good reporter, but Mark Carmen tweeted out yesterday, hearing from a reliable source, and that's, if you're looking for it, by the way, Carmen is spelled C-A-R-M-A-N, C-A-R-M-A-N. He said, 
Hearing from a reliable source, Jim Harbaugh will tell the team today slash tomorrow, that being Michigan, he is leaving to be the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Could have taken the Minnesota job, preferred Miami. He says, in parentheses, outside chance, Michigan pays over the top and he stays, but bet on Miami, he said. So um, I haven't, nobody, nobody reliable has been able to verify this for me. Again, the, the person who told me this is true is someone who has given me good and bad information in the past. So it's not, I wouldn't call it a tier one source. I would call it a tier two or a tier three source at best. But well, what do you think, Steve, is going to happen here? Do you think uh, a, a lot of people in the chat are saying he's going to the Vikings? Like, well, what do you think happens with Harbaugh? And and would Harbaugh even be your first choice? He would be mine, but I know he, a lot he of was, people. He was 1A. He was yeah. 1A for me. Yeah. Like Who's Hall, 1B then? Or, or 1B. He would be 1B. 1A okay. would have been, would have been, for me, would have been Caldwell. But right. I put them in the same, like, I put them in the same boat, right? So, and Doug Peterson's up there too. Yeah. So, I I believe two things. I believe that when Stephen Ross said, I won't be the guy to take Harbaugh away from his job in, in Michigan, I said that's a setup answer in mm -hmm. my mind because who's the very first team that he went and interviewed with publicly Minnesota Minnesota so what does that tell you that tells you I wasn't the guy who took him he was already planning on leaving right I'd be stupid for like it's an out it's right. an out at with the alumni it's an out with the with the school you can honestly you can go back and say he didn't uh, he didn't interview with me first but I'd be stupid not to like try to take him I'm looking for a head coach and if he's already going to the NFL why wouldn't I do it yeah so I I think that I mean you can play dumb there if you're Stephen Ross and and I think the second thing that you can do is understand that if Harbaugh was the like it makes sense on who you were interviewing them right because I haven't been impressed with the people that they've been interviewing I'm like right. this doesn't make sense <laughs> you're just kidding at time. all yeah <laughs> at all and i'm like so you gotta know something yeah. in the back of your yeah. mind and harbaugh has got to be the case yeah. now the one thing i had with harbaugh that bothered me um is why are you out recruiting players and i put that in quotation marks because mm -hmm. he was in jacksonville recruiting players mm -hmm. um if you if you were gonna not stay so um, I don't know if he's really been recruiting players. I know that that the reports are out there that he has been, and I feel like if you're gonna leave or you, thought I, about I, leaving, I feel like this happens. I feel like this happens a lot. Like Mario Cristobal was recruiting with an Oregon T-shirt on until like five minutes before he took the Miami job. I, I, I just I just think that I, I I just think that you know yeah. But look at all the Oregon players that have come over to the University of Miami now. That he <laughs> right, recruited. right, yeah, but but still, I I think he was still at least the, doing the charade of recruiting those players to come to Oregon. How can you sit yeah. in somebody's family living room and say, "Come play here at this wonderful, beautiful school," and then ten minutes later, "Hey, uh, I'm leaving, guys. I'm going to take this other job," when you had to have been having the conversation? Yeah, so, you know, it may, maybe if if you, yeah, it does it does make sense, but it's like maybe if you're not a hundred percent sure because you still need to make sure that you get the contract you want, and you still need to make sure that because uh, and and maybe if Michigan were to come back with a crazy offer, that he would even say, you know what, maybe I am okay here. So I don't think you're ever a hundred percent sure until you actually sign the contract. So if you're not a hundred percent sure, then it's just business as usual, right? The Jim Harbaugh has to be like, you know what? I'd like to go to Miami and I think I'm going to get an offer here and I think I'm going to get a good offer and I want to go back to the NFL. But until I actually sign that paper, I need to keep operating as if I'm the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. I just think that's the way you have to do it. So you do it for appearances sake so that yes. you don't. No, and and, and like Joe, Joe Lee points out in the chat, you're contractually obligated to do the job until they leave. Yeah, I think that, that's the way that you look at it. It's like, you know, for maybe 10 minutes from now, I won't be. But right now, I'm the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines. I need to keep doing this job until it's I, not my job. I'll say this. The Dolphins will have a head coach by the end of this week. That much I'm sure. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I would think so. I'm yeah. almost like yeah. I am not a betting man, as everybody knows. But if I was... Like my money would be by Friday. They have a head coach, and it could be as early as today, for all we know. And I the, mean, and the yeah. thing with that is, is I do believe their top two candidates are Mike McDaniel, who got eliminated this week, and Harbaugh. I think yeah. that 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 they're that, and they want Harbaugh above McDaniel. Yeah, 
McDaniel is a hope and a wish and a prayer that he turns out to be like Shanahan and McVay. Right. Like, fingers crossed he turns out to be that way. And there's the optimism that he could be, right? Yeah. But he would never be their first choice to replace what they had. Right. So, uh, but it just goes again that I think in the back of their mind, I think there might have been a under the door deal with between Ross and Harbaugh. Like, hey, and and I truly think it happened the last conversation years ago when they were looking for a coach. Because if mm-hmm. I'm correct, they interviewed Harbaugh then too, did they not? Um, well, it was like a secret interview where he and Correct. Jeff, he and Jeff Ireland, and, and this was when Harbaugh was at Stanford, uh, Jeff Ireland and Steven Ross, they took a private jet out to, uh, they probably met him in Palo Alto where Stanford is, and they kind of made him a pitch. And for whatever reason, uh, it didn't work out. And I, I think maybe Harbaugh was like, Hey, I, like, how can you offer me the job right now when you haven't even fired Sperano. It was just an awkward thing and it didn't come to fruition. But yeah, maybe they did talk about it then. Maybe they talked about, hey, even if it doesn't work out today, Ross looked him in the eye and said, someday, kid, someday I'm bringing you down to Miami. I I, I really, and I think there was truth in that statement. I really think that happened. Something to that effect that, hey, look, we are going to, we're going to, we're going to be here and we're going to say, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. And so if I rub my nose and say, uh, Michigan is really, really cold during this month. Like that's the key phrase. Know <laughs> that what that really means is I'm ready to bring you to Miami. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, shout out to Pete with the $20 donation. Love um, it. Said who would fear, who would fear a Tua and Mike led team? Can you imagine the midget squad led dolphins? <laughs> with Mike and Tua? Can you imagine the other sidelines? would say when they look across the field and see Tua and Mike talking a bubble screen. <laughs> oh Come on, God. Pete. That's funny. So, Pete, 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 you're hilarious. But the thing is, like, actually, and, and you guys know, obviously, I'm I'm a, I'm a Tua skeptic. After some of my tweets over the weekend, people think I'm a Tua hater. Whatever, you can think whatever you want to. I'm, I'm a Tua skeptic, but I would say, honestly, if the Dolphins were to get Mike McDaniel, I think he would be great for Tua. Because, Steve, people always talk about, you know, okay, for Tua to succeed – you need to make the offense a certain way that he's, you know, he's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not, Correct. you know, it's not Pat Mahomes uh, aside from last night. The Tua is not just going to throw for 450 yards a game, light it up, right? You need to have a better offensive line. You need to have a really good innovative run game. Mike McDaniel theoretically can give him that. I mean, you're talking about a guy, Mike McDaniel is regarded as a genius for his offensive play designs and the way that he innovates in the running game. So you're talking mm-hmm. about making that running game better to take pressure off of Tua and making the blocking schemes better for the offensive line while hopefully also finding better offensive linemen. It seems like Mike McDaniel, to me, could do that. I mean, look, look how far, and, and I know he wasn't the head coach of the team, but look at uh, at how far the 49ers had, have been able to get two out of the past three yep. years with Jimmy with Garoppolo, Garoppolo. As the quarterback. And by the way, I think Tua Tonga-Vailoa has a much higher ceiling than Jimmy Garoppolo. He may, he may end up being a better quarterback in this league than Jimmy Garoppolo. And look how close the Niners have gotten with Jimmy G as their quarterback. I think Mike McDaniel could be great with Tua Tonga-Vailoa. I was saying this yesterday. I was like, you know, I'm watching the game and I'm like, man, Debo Samuel is I think successful because of Mike McDaniel and what he did. And so I would say that, man, if imagine Jalen Waddle and a Mike McDaniel offense with, with, with an average quarterback. Right. So I really think that it, it would be, here's what I'll say. I'll say this. I'll think that no matter what the case is, whether it's Harbaugh or McDaniel, I think there's a good chance that two is probably they're going to look to upgrade at the quarterback position this offseason, especially if it's Harbaugh. Let me ask you this about Har. And again, we don't we don't know if Harbaugh's coming to Miami. We don't. There have, hot, there have been some hot rumors that it could be happening. If Harbaugh were to come, um, wouldn't that take some of Chris Greer's power and influence away? Because Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh is not the type of coach that's just going to skin. And, you know, uh, uh, allegedly one of the reasons why Brian Flores is gone is he wanted to take some influence and say away from the general manager. Now, ideally, you want your coach and general manager to be working together and agreeing on everything, mm-hmm. holding hands and saying kumbaya. That may not necessarily be the case with Jim Harbaugh. Har- Harbaugh has more cachet than Brian Flores did. 
So if Jim Harbaugh were to come in, don't you think that that would end up reducing Chris Greer's role a bit? You have to even wonder if Chris Greer might really be on the hot seat if Jim Harbaugh comes in. Because well, I, you know, I, I, it's going to be I, hard I, for Greer to have final say with Harbaugh here. One of the things that, um, and and I know, uh, one of the things that I've had TD on, TD Fence talk on, and he said that whoever gets the head coaching job is probably on a one-year make it or break it deal. And that everybody, like next offseason, I think it was TD who said that. TD, if you didn't say that, I apologize. But um, I'm pr- like, I, I 100% think that the person who gets this head coaching job is on the hot seat from day one. And and that includes Greer. But if it's Harbaugh who gets the guy to your uh, statement, I would say that Harbaugh, like Greer had to have known from Ross, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm not going to fire you. Right. I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to bring you on. But just know that Stephen Ross is the guy that's coming in here. And you are going to have Harbaugh. to work with Stephen. So do you – oh, yeah, Harbaugh. So do you either want to work with Harbaugh and stay here? Or do you want me to let you go now? Right? So I think that that's what – I think that – again, I think there was some backdoor conversations that happened. And I would – if Stephen Ross got this deal, it gets this job, it was 100% – done from day one like they knew exactly what was going to happen like you can't tell me that wasn't the case right right am i wrong in thinking that no you're right and and also but the thing is why i'm I'm still i'm going to caution everybody watching this because i see some people getting really excited about jim harbaugh coming here um i i think a lot of it it is wishful thinking because mm-hmm. people would like to think the Dolphins had a secret plan and they're not just incompetent, okay? Because they, they that's the case. <laughs> because they, uh, me too, me too. But I just, I just want to throw this into the universe so people understand that, like, don't look at this and say, hey, we were actually geniuses the entire time, right? Because w- w- what have we been critical of in the coaching search so far? And I think we're today marks the three week point since. Since Brian Flores was fired, he was fired exactly three weeks ago. And listen, to be fair, not every team has moved quickly. We're we're seeing the dominoes starting to fall into place around the league with the Giants most recently. Not everyone has moved really quickly to find new head coaches, but the Dolphins have been very slow, very deliberate on this. I don't know exactly how much they loved Brian Dayball. Now, it would make sense not to make... What, what, what? Rihanna is pregnant with ASAP Rock. Cameron, did? you confirm Woo! this. Is this real? Now, this is Cameron from East 32. This is our boy, Cameron. Mm-hmm. He seems reliable to me. me. Well, hold on now. You are giving Cameron way too much <laughs> credit, Alex. <laughs> way maybe, too maybe he much perform, credit. He performed the ultrasound. He knows. Cameron, did you perform the ultrasound on Rihanna? That's the real question here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I'll say this. I think that I think two things. Um, I think that Mc, Joey says McDaniel may not even want to come here. That's another thing, too. We don't know that. Yeah, exactly. Because the real re- and, and, and see, because that's, you know, and you look at the day ball situation. If our if our goal was to get from Cameron said, heck, yeah, I did. Um, if our goal was to get. A, a head coach like Harbaugh from, from the moment, then you have to understand that the Dolphins already have a plan to move forward from day one. And so that the Dayball interviews, like even that was Dayball picked, maybe he picked the Giants because we knew we were giving him the runaround, not because right. the Giants were a better job Just than because us. Because he wanted an offer. I want they that to be true off. so bad yeah, yeah. because I look at the situation and look, I don't want, by the way, I think we dodged a bullet with Dayball. Let me just state that from the beginning. Yeah, I, I don't love him. But it still doesn't say good things about us if Dayball picked the Giants over us because right. that would be like you're, you're killed. Like, you're like, why are, why can the Dolphins not even do bad things the right way? Like, you couldn't even, like, the decision I didn't want you to make wasn't even made by you. It was made by somebody else because he didn't want to come here. Yeah, the Giants don't even have cap space. It's like, it's, it's, they don't have, they yeah. don't. They do not. And, and if, and you know, it's, I don't know, man, it's just, it's so much to think about, but what I will say is I think next Monday or, or not next Monday, cause we're not doing the show next Monday. We're going to Tuesday. Delay. 
We're going to do the show on Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah we're we're going to have a regular I'm, clock I'm, uh, lockers on Monday. Yeah. Because I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be road tripping with the family back from Disney World next Monday. So we're going to do the show on Tuesday. Did you win a championship? Is that why you're going to Disney World? Uh, we go, we go frequently because, uh, we have annual passes for me, my wife and my kid, and they basically make you use your firstborn child as collateral. Those passes are so expensive. So when you have the, this is the way I'm all about getting my money's worth, Steve. So if I, if I'm going to pay an arm and two legs for a Disney annual pass, I'm going to go as often as humanly possible. Like any, any time I've got a free weekend, we're heading up to Disney. Got to get my money's worth on these passes. So that's where I'm at, bro. Hey, can I ask you a question about yesterday? Did you see the cigar smoking with Burrow and Jamar Chase? No, I didn't. The I, I didn't. I saw people talking about it, though, which I mean, listen, re- recreate recreating that uh, LSU moment. Right. Does it does it hurt? Like to me, it hurts a little bit watching that, because, you know, one of the things I was telling my wife yesterday is I love watching playoff football. Love it. Love the Super yeah. Bowl. Love all this. I'm like, I don't remember the Dolphins ever playing like the last time they went to an AFC championship game was 93. Yeah, I was five. I was yeah. five years old. I don't Ooh. remember that. No. I don't. So, like, I just, I want to see the Dolphins win, man. What do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? Like, remember Little Nicky? Did you remember that movie, yes, Little Nicky? Yes, I Nikki? do. You the remember Dan the Marino scene. With the oh. Dan Marino? He's like, Dan, you're too nice of a okay. guy. I can't let you do that, man. Like, I feel like that's the and, and then he says, you did it for Joe Namath. And then the devil said, well, he was coming here anyway. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, it's like. It's like, come on, man. What do I have to do to get the Dolphins to be like this? Um, I don't know, man. It bothers me. It bothers me, man. The thing is, like, you you, you could argue you have to be bold, okay? Um, And listen, I, I uh, I know people have differing opinions on the quarterback who's currently in place, but... You know, you, you and I saw a couple of people say this in the chat that if if you really want to revolutionize your franchise, you go out and you get Jim Harbaugh and you go out and get yourself a quarterback. Now, at the same time, if you want to have your cake and eat it too, is this true, Cap? But now, now Pete, he's saying McDaniel is here right now. Well, he, the follow up interviews are happening this week, so he could very well be here right now. It doesn't mean he's leaving with a signed contract, but McDaniel could be here. And again, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't lose a second of sleep if Mike McDaniel became the Dolphins head coach because I think he could potentially revolutionize this offense in a good way. Now well, you talk about needing to get a coach and needing to get a quarterback. Steve, I can live with the idea that no matter who comes in as the coach of this team, you give to a one more year to really pr- to make or break it, and you try to put him in a position to succeed because I do think Brian Flores was he was sabotaging Tua a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Even as a Tua skeptic, I can say that he was putting he was putting Tua in positions to fail, not to succeed. Okay, and and honestly, Tua Tagovailoa he is still on his rookie deal, so he's not costing you much. It's one of the reasons why you have so much cap space is because you're paying your starting quarterback, uh, you know, minimum for a guy who was drafted in his position, right? So you take an opportunity this coming year to try and put him in a position to succeed one more year where he's not making a whole lot of money. And then if it doesn't work out, then you can move on. Cause guess what? The quarterback class of 2020, 23 in the draft is a lot better than Than the quarterback class of 2022. Okay. And I would imagine the dolphins will probably have a higher pick next year because their pick, which is San Francisco's pick is going to be 29th overall. That's not very good. Okay. So chances are the dolphins will end up with a higher pick next year than this year and there's going to be better quarterbacks available so it just it I mean, makes that, sense it and, unless you're getting Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson in a trade it makes sense not to move on from Tua now look I'll say this I think that I want the dog I want that to not be true I want us to have the 32nd overall pick eventually one day yes but right but by, by, by our own doing not San yes. Francisco's doing correct a hundred percent right and so look I think I think the we need to understand as Dolphins fans, this next pick, whoever the head coach is, is so crucial for what we do moving forward as a franchise. Because I believe if it's McDaniel, and again, I'll be optimistic. Let me just state that for everybody. I will be optimistic. There will be a point next year where I'll be like, you know what? This is it. This is a great team. The Dolphins are doing amazing, right? 
I'm sure I'll have that moment next year. Yeah. But if I, again, was a betting man, I would say if McDaniel's the pick, we're going to be in this boat either with it sometime in the next three years, yeah. except it'll be a clean house. If right. it's Harbaugh, then I think we're making a run at the Super Bowl and we're upgrading at the quarterback position. I like it. Yeah. I'm going to, that's what I'm going to say. So I think that I look, I mean, I'm all for Harbaugh. If Harbaugh ends up being the guy, the Dolphins are doing exactly what they need to be doing. Dayball never chose us over them. They can say whatever they want because that Dayball wasn't even the guy to begin with. Right. We don't, you know, and, and I pray to God, Kellen Moore ends. If Kellen Moore ends up being the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, Alex, <laughs> God help this fan base. <laughs> God help this fan base. Oh, man. That's, that's going to be a, a rough day. A rough day if that were to happen. I know. I know. Uh, all right, man. What do you got coming up this week? Well, uh, Monday through Thursday this week is Friday. I will be driving up to Orlando, so I don't think I'm going to have a show then. But I've got my afternoon show, Dono Daily, on Five Reasons Sports YouTube every day this week. Uh, I know that the focus of today's episode, I haven't written the uh, the title for it yet, but it's going to have it's going to have to do with the Harbaugh reports. Now, maybe by the time I go on, maybe Harbaugh has already chosen here or chosen Minnesota. We'll see. But it's going to be a a Harbaugh-centric episode this afternoon. I do every weekday, uh, unless I'm traveling or something, uh, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. on 5 Reasons Sports YouTube. I also have, for anybody watching this who's in the South Florida area, uh, we're going to have a a little heat watch party tonight in Davie. So stop by the quarter deck location in Davie Come out and see us tonight. Enjoy some of the great food, drink specials, two for one happy hour. So just search uh, Google search or Google Maps, the quarter deck location in Davie. It's right across the street from Nova Southeastern University. Come out and see us there tonight. I'll be getting there around seven o'clock. Well, man, I wish I lived down there. God, I know, man. dude, you, you, you would you would be right there if you did. I know that I would. just start driving now. Come on down. I'll start driving. I'll start driving in my head. Yeah. OK, it'll be imaginary. And hopefully I don't get pulled over by the cops doing 80. In 55! Okay, You're uh, going to have to do faster than 80 to get here in like nine hours, I think. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. So I came down for the the game we lost 52 to 10. Ooh. Opening week. Yeah. Okay? Two yeah. years ago. Yeah. I drove down with my buddy, and it was in the middle of a hurricane that was hitting Atlanta and South Carolina. Oh my God. Uh, he drove the whole way. We drove down 95. We did not hit any traffic till we got past Jacksonville. Wow. And, and he did like 85 from because nobody was on the roads. Yeah. yeah. Not even not even state troopers. Right. So and so and, and it wasn't horrible weather on the highway. Mm-hmm. So we went from Baltimore all the way down to South. Like the moment we hit Jacksonville, we hit traffic. Yeah. And then, of course, I he's like, dude, I'll just drive to Jacksonville. I'm like, fine. But the moment we hit Jacksonville, what it, I mean, it took us just as long to get from Jacksonville to <laughs> Miami as it did from Baltimore to Jacksonville. Wow. Yeah. That is great. So mad. So upset. Um, Chef Ju says he'll be there at seven. I love it. Chef Ju, we'll see you there. That's awesome. And, and tell tell your friends, bring as many people as you want. Let's pack, let's let's pack the house and and we'll, we'll be out in the the patio. They got a great patio there at the Davy location. It's a little chilly though, so wear a jacket. Hey, uh, you, we are going to have this up audio, hopefully by the end of this week. Yes, sir. Both episodes. When that happens, be on the lookout because we're going to announce it on Twitter. Um, and I want you guys to download and make sure you guys do all that stuff because uh, we're trying to grow this thing and we can't do it without y'all's help. So just understand that y'all are the best fans in the world. Thank you so much for joining this amazing show. Um, tomorrow will be Clock Blackers, home of the number one Miami fan morning show. I will have Daniel Oyefusi on. We will do the Dolphins report with him, and maybe some breaking news happens during that. So that'll be a lot of fun, Um, but it should be a lot of fun. And remember, tomorrow night, the Miami Sports Music Power Hour, Cameron, Jamie Bahamas, and the Honorable Solo D and myself, we do a power hour, and it'll be a lot of fun. And just so you guys know, this show is usually a little bit longer but somebody has other things to do today. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my uh, my jury duty postponed because it's going to be. Uh, it's supposed to happen on a week where I'm in and out of town next month. So I'm trying to get it postponed. And of course, 
I blame wait everything till, on Dono today. I wait till the deadline day because it says on my little paper that January 31st is like the last day to confirm or to make any alterations. And in, in typical Dono fact, I've had this thing in my house for like two weeks. And of course, I wait until the last possible minute. I need to try and get it done before my afternoon show today. So I'm going to be on it. You know what, Alex? That just sounds like excuses to me. That Absolutely. just sounds like excuses. Just a typical Batman fan that you are. <laughs> typical Bat. We all know Superman is better than Batman, bro. Batman literally, know. he let Superman live. He could have killed bro. him. He let him live. Anyways. Oh, by the way, the new Batman movie looks great, by the way. It does. I can't wait that. for that. I can't. Really when, when, when does it come out? Sometime in the spring. February right? 20th. No, February 10th, I think. Oh, I love it. Wow, so just a couple weeks. Oh, I cannot yeah. wait. I will no. be there. And then, oh, and by the way, the Olympics... We're going to talk Olympics, right? Do you watch Olympics? I do. Yeah, yeah. Although don't I, don't, I don't, I don't. That support didn't sound China. very convincing. Yeah, but I, I, I am, I am boycotting. I'm boycotting China because unlike LeBron James, I have principles. Oh no, you didn't! Don't you talk about that, man? You know how I feel about LeBron. <laughs> you, oh, I, I you did that just to get under my skin. I saw. I did. You. I did. You, mm. Anyways, uh, all right, you end the show, man. All right, man. Well, I, I want a huge shout out to everybody who watched on the live chat. I want to throw a, a special shout out to uh, to Epps on there because Epps and I, we bonded last week and he wrote me a nice message near the start of the show. And everyone who gave super chats, thank you so much. All right. So make sure you guys tune into everything going on here on Miami Sports Music. Uh, if you guys watch my afternoon shows on Five Reasons Sports as well, I will be forever in your debt for doing that. And yeah, probably by the time Steve and I do this again, We'll probably have a new head coach for the Miami Dolphins. We will talk to you guys next time on the Double D Show. Dono and Daniels here on Miami Sports Music.